And you know what Angry Birds is about. Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and this is my full review of the Sony Tablet S. Now if you didn't see my unboxing video and also my first turn on and setup of this device then please do stick around till the end of this video there will be links that you can click to take you to those videos. Now this is the full review, I'm going to start off by just giving you an overview of the tablet. It's a 9.4 inch screen, a touch sensitive capacitive touch screen and this is running a dual core processor. It's also running Android OS 3.1, so the latest uh, tablet flavour of the Android operating system. And it's very well presented. We've got a, a home screen here that's populated with some uh, sort of Sony uh, icons on the front. We've also got some little tiny quick shortcut icons up the top here, which takes us into things like settings, the browser, and even this social feed. I'm going to give you a physical look at the device first and then I'm going to dim the lights so that we can concentrate on screen quality. So we've got front facing camera, very nice camera indeed. We've also got, um, I just will clarify this, I have put a screen protector on here from an iPad. That's why you can see a little hole cut out here. It just helps with glare from my light so do bear with me on that. So let's have a look at this edge of the device. Now this edge is completely clear until we get to here and this is where we uh, plug the uh, proprietary connector for charging the device. Now you do get a cable supplied, there are optional docks coming out for this as well so we can dock this into some sort of charging device. On this edge here, you can see here we've got one speaker, we've also got a little room here to attach some sort of wrist strap and then we've got a little cover here which I can open, just open this up with my thumbnail and we have got under here a micro USB socket and also a full size SD card slot. So you can put an SD or SDHC memory card in there up to 32 gigabytes and then this just snaps back into place. Then we've got a three and a half millimeter uh, audio jack for your headphones and then on this top edge it is completely clear but there are, is an IR transmitter under there because this will act as a remote control as well. And then round on this side we have got some controls for power. We've also got a charging LED, we've got volume rocker, reset switch, another speaker and also underneath this panel here there is a very bright LED here and it's like a notification LED and I've ha been having problems with it. It flashes a really bright green so in a darkened room it will keep you awake and I found no way of turning that off. Let's turn around onto the back, you can see it's a glossy effect with slight sort of dimples to it, so it has got a texture to it, but it does pick up fingerprints, look at that. There's also two little rubberized feet here, and then just here we've got a 5 megapixel autofocus camera which works very well indeed. That's it on the back, we've just got a few little bits of information sort of engraved onto the bottom. This is like a plastic but it's got a metallic finish this is quite cheap grade plastic not too keen on the build quality or the feel of the plastic on the back of this device so back round to the front and let's turn this device on I'm going to actually dim the lights now and then give you a look at this in comparison to an iPad 2 just to give you an idea of how the screen performs so here are both the devices switched on I'm in a sort of dimly lit room at the moment and I just wanted to show you that I've switched auto brightness off on both devices and put them both up to maximum brightness. So let's go back to the gallery on here and on the iPad 2 we will go back to the gallery as well. So we're showing exactly the same photo. Let me just swing these around and just keep the photo in that orientation just so that we get the whole screen in on camera. And I shall show you the difference. So we've got the iPad 2 here and the uh, Sony Tablet S on the left. Both of these are full brightness and both of them are displaying the same photo. And the photo was actually taken with the Sony Tablet S, so that five megapixel camera. You can see if I zoom in 
on both, get it roughly looking the same. Now the Sony Tablet S doesn't let you look at the photo in full screen, it keeps this bar at the top, uh, top and the bottom for the various controls for some reason so it won't display the photo full screen but you can see the actual clarity of the two is very good the whites I'm not sure if this is shown correctly on camera but the whites on the iPad 2 are definitely whiter and on the Sony Tablet S there is a slight yellow tinge to the photo uh, but both are very good don't get me wrong the definition on the iPad 2 is very slightly better as well and I just think the overall tonal quality on the iPad 2 is better. Uh, but that said, the viewing experience for photos on both devices are very good. Concentrating on the Sony Tablet S, very nice experience. So let's get rid of the iPad 2 for now and go back to concentrating on the device that I'm reviewing. So let's have a look at this. Well, this was taken with the Sony Tablet S. How cool is that? Let me zoom in a little bit for you. Now I'm going to just scroll through. Uh, let's go to this one. This was taken on the device as well. So is this. And that one. And then we've got a more zoomed out photo as well. The clarity, even though we've zoomed out on that, extremely good. It's picked up the focus fairly well, slightly out of focus on here, even though it did confirm it had focused in, but overall very good. If I go back to that picture of the Audio Technica mic, you've got a good amount of detail in this photo. I think it's a very good performance on both the screen and on actual taking of the photo as well. So good five megapixel camera on this device. So what else do I like? Well, I am loving uh, the Twitter application I, I've installed called TweetDeck. Uh, this is my Twitter feed. Works very well. Nice performance. Scrolling's very smooth. So there's no lag in sort of scrolling once you're in an app. However, when I go back out to my home screen, there is some lag when I'm going from screen to screen here sometimes, although it's not lagging at the moment. So you do get some lag, but not too bad. What else do I like? Absolutely love Gmail. Like the look of the interface. Love the keyboard. Let me just tap on uh, one of these and we will uh, tap reply. And this brings up the on screen keyboard. Very nicely presented. Uh, let's just do a quick bit of typing. Uh, fail there. Let's start again. And there we go, it comes up with suggestions as you saw there while I'm typing keyboard it comes up with suggestions of words here so if I type uh, O and then I can click keyboard to complete the word um, or if I type consistent it's come up with consistent so I can do a shortcut to complete the word very nice clean interface nicely laid out keyboard as well there's this extra key here you can tap to gain access to symbols or you can tap alt give you access to alternative symbols so just very very nice way of typing it does of course work in either orientation so we can switch round to this orientation some people have asked in my videos does it sort of feel weird holding it by this sort of thicker part of the tablet and I must say that no it doesn't it feels very comfortable in the hand and it's weighted right they've done this right this is something Sony have done really well let me just pop out to uh, the home screen let me go back on this we want to discard this let's get rid of that discard message so let's go back out to the home screen I just want to show you that again so we've got this sort of thinner part here thicker here and the idea is that you're going to hold it in this hand and most of the weight is in your hand rather than hanging off this edge and it really does work extremely well so great design feature that they thought of there and it makes it a very distinctive design as well so, what else do I like? Let me show you the remote control. I've added some devices to the remote feature now. I've got my Sony TV and my Skybox. And this works with Sky HD. So you can tap on the device and you've got this full 
remote control. We've got one screen here with all the number pad, color buttons, play, stop, record, pause, etc. Program up and down. Even get up the guide as well. We can tap the arrow here, goes across to even more buttons. Or we can have a gesture control as well. So if we tap on this gesture area, we can actually flick sort of left and right to fast forward or to skip programs, volume up and down, so we can swipe up and down. You can choose how this screen works as well. Let's go back out to the device list, and I can tap on Sony TV. Volume up and down, control pad here. We've got another uh, menu here with even more features than is on the remote that comes with the TV, so I can select, direct select which input I want to use instead of cycling through them, so that's really nice. And adding the device is easy as well, tap register device, then on next you select the type of device, you select the manufacturer, and then it guides you through testing that the buttons work. So that is really nice, absolutely love the remote control feature of this device. The YouTube app, we've already seen this on other Android um, devices, but it works very well. If we go to the home screen, this is probably the nicest presented part of the YouTube app on Android. It's got this sort of nice sweeping feel with tiles coming across, and you can scroll across and select what you want to watch. You can go to your channel as well if you want. Oh, let's go back, tap the wrong button. So we will go back to your channel and we've got uploads, playlists, so these are all my playlists, Look, 200 videos on Apple products on the Geekanoids channel, shameless plug, favourites, this goes into my favourites, and then subscriptions, which will go into my subscriptions, all nicely presented, and it all works very well indeed. What else do I like? Gaming performance, the obvious game, I always do this, Angry Birds, absolutely superb love angry birds i've only just started playing this new seasons one um, so i haven't got very far in it sounds good we can gain access to the volume controls on the side here they're very easy to find now i should mention that at full volume these little speakers which are located just here do distort and you do get some vibrations resonating into your hands as well so not too good on the speakers they go nice and loud though could be louder let's just go into one uh, we're just going to number one so this is the very first one and you know what Angry Birds is about and there we go I failed the level already the idea is to get all of those piggies with the birds and complete each level but it runs very smoothly if I just pause I'll go back out to the main menu let's go into one I haven't completed yet so this one as you can see very smooth um, I haven't even worked out what I'm doing on this one yet let's just restart that that was a complete fail need to get him over the back I think You get the idea. So that's Angry Birds, I'm not going to bore you with playing that, but it works just very smoothly, nice vibrant colours on the screen, they've done a really good job on that. Now I'm going to just cover off one other thing I don't like, and that is when we go into the setting for brightness, and we set this to maybe a middle ground, maybe here, and then we're going to tap auto. So now it's going to use its sensor on the front of the device, so I think it's just up here, the light sensor and it's going to use that to adjust the screen brightness automatically. Now I found that it sets it to a nice brightness like we are here, so we've got a nice sort of white level, and then all of a sudden with no warning it just goes to full brightness. Very very off-putting, very annoying, and I think they've got an issue with the light sensors on here. Hopefully they'll be able to update that with a software update but I think they should address that quite quickly because it keeps going to full brightness. So I'm tending to go into this setting and take off auto brightness and set it to something that I'm sort of happy with. While we're in this menu of the applications that are installed, I'll just show you that it's Sony's own take on it. It's got a nice animation that bumps when you get to the top and the bottom. So that's really nice. 
and we also get this on some of the screens we get this slight sort of blurring effect to the top to show you you've actually scrolled to the top of what you're looking at so overall the Sony Tablet S what do I think of it is it a buy or a not to buy well 9.4 inches dual core processors full size SD card slot uh, a nice distinct design on the side there uh, nice and responsive not too much lag a little bit of lag sometimes pricing 399 it starts at for the 16 gigabyte Wi-Fi model 479 for the 32 gigabyte Wi-Fi model and 499 for the 16 gigabyte Wi-Fi plus 3G which isn't available yet they're all UK prices in pounds the US will vary about an extra hundred dollars on each of those prices and for that sort of price it is a fairly good choice this is very comparable to the other Android tablets on the market I think if I was putting my own money down on one of these I'd probably still choose the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 or I might wait a couple of months till some of these newer tablets are coming out but if you want something now with that extra functionality of the remote control and you're living in the Sony world this could well be the choice for you well thank you very much for watching this has been my review of the Sony Tablet S. Please do come back soon and check out more videos on the Geek Noise channel and I'll see you all in the next video.